Today we will learn about nervous control. In the last video, we have learned about control and coordination in plants. Today, let's talk about control and coordination in animals. In animals, control and coordination is carried out by the nervous system and muscular tissue. Neuron Nervous tissue is formed from the net of many nerve cells or also called neurons. Neuron is a structural and functional unit of the nervous system. A neuron consists of a cell body, dendrite and axon. The cell body is shaped like a star in which small fibers that is dendrites and a nerve axon originates. Neuron transmits information of stimulus from one part of the body to another part through electrical impulses. Let's talk about it in detail. The sense organ in our body consists of receptors. Dendrites of neurons are present in the receptors. The dendritic tip identify the information in the environment. For example, the olfactory receptors present in our nostrils detect the smell. Gustatory receptor present in tongue identifies taste. The photoreceptor present in eyes identifies the light. The phonoreceptors present in the ear detect the sound and the thermoreceptors present in the skin detect temperature. The information detected at the end of the dendritic tip results in a chemical reaction which creates an electrical impulse. Through dendrite, the electrical signal passes to the cell body. Travelling through the axon, it reaches the end of the axon. It causes the release of some chemicals called neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters travel through the space between the two neurons called as synapse and therefore transfer the information to the dendrites of the second neuron where it gets converted into an electrical impulse. This is how nervous impulse travels through the nervous system. In the end of the last neuron, transmits the electrical impulse to the muscle cells or gland through the synapse. The synapse that transmits the electrical impulse from neuron to the muscle cells is called Neuromuscular junction. Muscle cells and glands convert the electrical impulse into action. Therefore, we call them as effector. Our body consists of three types of neuron. Sensory neuron obtain the information from the receptor present in the sensory organs. Motor neuron Transport the nerve impulse to the muscle cells and glands. Relay neuron Transport the nervous impulse from sensory neuron to the motor neuron. Now, let's understand how these neurons work together. Reflex action You must have felt that if you touch any hot object accidentally, the organ of touch gets pulled back immediately. Such an instant response to the stimulus without any thought is called reflex action. Such actions happen to protect the organ or body. During this reflex action, information from the receptor present in our skin reaches the sensory neuron. Information in a sensory neuron is converted into an electrical impulse. 
this information is transmitted from the transmitting neuron to the motor neuron. The connection between a sensory neuron and a motor neuron is called a reflex arc. These reflex arcs are formed in the spinal cord. All the nerves in the brain form a bundle in the spinal cord. The motor neuron transmits the signal to the effector, here the muscle cells of the arm. After receiving the signal, the action in the muscle cells is such that the hand gets pulled away from the hot object. This action is done by us without thinking. Had we spent time thinking about the response, then there will be a delay in the action which will be sufficient to cause severe injury to the part in contact with the hot object. The spinal cord controls the reflexes and immediately responds to such a situation. Note that the information also goes to the brain. Brain Not all actions we perform are reflex actions. For example, walking, speaking, running, etc. For such actions, thinking is necessary. The actions which require thinking are called voluntary actions. In this, our brain helps us. The brain integrates various input and output information. Therefore, the brain is called the main coordinating center of our body. There are three parts of the brain, forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. The forebrain is the major thinking part of brain which is made up of cerebrum, hypothalamus and thalamus. The cerebrum controls our voluntary actions. There are different areas in the cerebrum for different receptors. There are also various associative areas in the cerebrum which interpret the sensory information, information from other receptors and information already collected in the brain and make decisions in order to give response. This decision is conveyed to the motor areas which controls the movement of the voluntary muscles. The hypothalamus controls functions such as body temperature, appetite, growth, etc. Pituitary gland is present below the hypothalamus, secretes various hormones in the blood. The midbrain regulates involuntary actions in our body. These are not in our control. The hindbrain is made up of pawns medulla and cerebellum. The cerebellum controls the precision of voluntary actions and the posture and balance of the body. And medulla controls all the involuntary actions like heartbeat, salivation, vomiting, etc. which are not in our control. The spinal cord is present below the medulla. Protection of brain and the spinal cord. The brain and spinal cord are soft organs. The brain is protected by a box of bones called as cranium or also called skull and by the cerebrospinal fluid located inside the skull. This fluid absorbs shocks and protects the brain. Similarly, the spinal cord is protected by vertebral column or backbone. Central Nervous System and Peripheral Nervous System The brain and spinal cord makes up the central nervous system. The central nervous system receives and integrates various information from the body. In order to transmit the response signal 
for the information received various nerves comes out of the brain and spinal cord the nerves originating from the brain are called cranial nerves and the nerves coming out of the spinal cord are called spinal nerves peripheral nervous system is formed from the cranial and spinal nerves peripheral nervous system transmit information between the central nervous system and other parts of the body and causes muscle movements movement in the muscle we know that muscle cells contain special types of proteins when the nerve impulse reaches the muscle cell by peripheral nervous system the electrical impulse changes both the shape and arrangement of the protein due to which the shape of the muscle changes which causes the muscular movement thus the response has given thus the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system control and coordinate various functions of the body so today we learned about nervous control about control and coordination in plants each organism identifies the changes occurring around it and responds based on these changes the identification of changes by the organism in the environment around it so that it can give some reaction is termed as stimulus the reaction given to the stimulus is called the response in order to give the response the organism performs various movements some movements cause a change in position of organism if an organism changes its position during a movement then such movement is called locomotion in order to give a response for a stimulus there is a need for control over the movements in addition to this it is also necessary for various organs to work together we call it coordination let's talk about control and coordination in this video plants can't change the place as that of animals however perform various movements in order to give a response if we touch the mimosa plant then the leaves of plant begin to fold up and droop this kind of movement has no relation with growth if the movement performed to give response does not involve growth then such kind of movement is called growth independent movement let's understand the growth independent movement in the mimosa plant the cells of the leaves of mimosa plant are filled with water the shape of cells is maintained by the water pressure due to this the leaves remain open when the plant detects touch it releases certain chemicals like potassium and chloride ions increased iron concentration outside the cell reduces the difference between the concentration of ions within the cell and outside the cells water gets transported to the outside of the cell through the process of osmosis this causes contraction of cells and so leaves get closed even if we touch the plant at any part but still the response is given by other parts as well for this information of touch is transported to other parts of the plant by the electrochemical means because of this the leaves get closed the movement of closing the leaves in the mimosa plant is termed as seismonastic movement which is the growing independent movement similar movements are 
blooming of lotus during the morning catching of insect by venus fly trap when the insect touches the plant etc movement dependent on growth in some plants such as grapes plants tendrils are sensitive to touch when a part of the tendril comes into contact with the base then the part of the tendril in touch with the base grows slowly while the part which is away from the tendril grows faster as a result of this tendril circles around the base and climbs over it the response has a direct relation with growth such movement is called growth dependent movement here the plant grows in one direction in response to the stimulus if the plant grows in the certain direction in response to the stimulus then such movement is called tropism various environmental factors acts as stimuli to the plants let's discuss about it light is a stimulus for plants shoot of the plants gives a response to the light by growing towards it however the roots of the plant grow away from the light the response of a plant for the stimulus of light is called phototropism if any part of the plant grows towards light then we call it a positive phototropism and if any part of the plant grows away from the light then we call it as negative phototropism we know that roots of the plant always grow downward and shoot always grow upward the downward movement of the roots and the upward movement of the shoot shows a response to the stimulus of gravitation the response given to the stimulus of gravitation is called geotropism growth of roots downward in the soil is positive geotropism while the growth of shoot upward and away from the soil is negative geotropism similarly roots of the plant grow towards water the response given by the plant to the stimulus of water is called hydrotropism plants also give a response to the stimulus of chemicals for example when pollen grains reaches the stigma there is a development of a pollen tube to take pollen grain towards ovule such a moment is called chemotropism we will talk about it in the upcoming videos plants respond to various environmental stimuli for giving the response stimulated cells release various hormones depending on the stimulus for example plant detect the stimulus of light because of that shoot produces hormone auxin hormone is a carbonic compound that is produced in small concentration they are used to transfer the information to various parts of the organism the hormone produced by the plant is called phytohormone the place of synthesis of the hormone and the action of the hormone is often different for this the hormone reaches the functional area through the diffusion process auxin causes increase in the length of cells however when light comes from one direction then auxin diffuses from the tip of the plant towards the part of the plant away from the light due to this the concentration of auxin increases in that part therefore there is a greater increase in the length of cells in that part which causes the plant to turn towards the light in the same way the hormone gibberellin causes growth of the shoot of the plant hormone cytokinin stimulate the division of the cells therefore the concentration of cytokinin 
is higher in plant parts like fruits and seeds. Auxin, gibberellins, and cytokinin help the plant to grow. However, hormone abscisic acid inhibits the growth of the plant or plant part. For example, abscisic acid causes the leaves to turn yellow from green that results in the wilting of the leaves. Hormone ethylene, which is a gaseous hormone, causes the ripening of the fruits. In the same way, various plant hormones helps the plant to grow, develop and to control and coordinate various environmental stimuli. So today we have learned control and coordination in plants. plants, 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 plants. About endocrine control. In the previous video, we learned that nervous control coordinates various functions in our body. But not every cell in our body is connected to nervous system. Therefore, the nervous system cannot carry the electrical impulse to all the cells of the body. Similarly, when electrical impulses are generated and circulated by a cell, it takes some time for it to resume its mechanism before producing and transmitting another impulse. That is, cells do not generate and communicate electrical impulses continuously. Similarly, neural coordination is fast but only for a short time. In our body, hormones are used to carry signals to all the cells of the body and to maintain the coordination in the body for a long time. Hormones are non-nutritious chemicals that are produced in the body in a very low concentration. They are used to carry signals to various cells of the body. Therefore, hormones are called chemical messengers. Synthesis and secretion of hormones in animals is done by the endocrine glands. The mechanism that regulates various functions of all organs, tissues and cells of the body by the secretion of hormones is called the endocrine system. All the endocrine glands of our body are part of endocrine system. The endocrine glands do not have ducts, so the endocrine glands are called ductless glands. The hormones produced by them are secreted directly into the blood. With the blood, the hormones reaches all the cells of the body. Therefore, the location of the synthesis of hormones and the place of action in the body are different. The main endocrine glands in the human body are as shown. Let's understand them. The pituitary gland is present below the hypothalamus in the forebrain part of our brain. The pituitary gland secretes various hormones in our body, such as growth hormone, which control the growth and development of the body. If the secretion of growth hormone is high during childhood, then there is abnormal growth of the body, which is called gigantism. If the secretion of growth hormone is less during childhood, growth is blocked and height of the body does not increase, which is called dwarfism. When the level of growth hormone decreases in the body, the hypothalamus secretes the growth hormone releasing factor which causes the pituitary gland to secrete growth hormone. Thus, hormones produced by the hypothalamus regulate the synthesis and secretion of hormones secreted by the pituitary gland. 
The pineal gland is present in the upper part of the forebrain. It secretes melatonin hormone. Melatonin regulates the body's daily 24 hours rhythm. That is, it controls sleep wake cycle and temperature. Thyroid gland is present in our throat, is made up of two lobes, where each lobe is present on either side of the respiratory tract. Therefore, the shape of the thyroid gland resembles that of the butterfly. Thyroid gland synthesizes and secretes thyroxine hormone. Thyroxine controls the metabolism of carbohydrates, proteins and fat in our body. Therefore, thyroxine mainly helps in the regulation of the basal metabolic rate of the body and provides suitable balance for the growth of the body. Thyroid gland synthesizes thyroxine hormone with the help of iodine. Iodine is therefore required for synthesis of thyroxine at normal rates. So, we should take iodized salt. Iodine deficiency reduces the synthesis of thyroxine known as hypothyroidism. It leads to the disease called goiter. In this disease, there is a growth of thyroid gland and swelling in the neck. If the synthesis and secretion of thyroxine is high in the body, then the level of thyroxine is increased, which is called hyperthyroidism. There are four parathyroid glands present on the posterior surface of the thyroid gland, which secrete parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone increases calcium levels in the blood. The thymus gland is present between the two lungs. It secretes thymosin hormone. Thymosin hormone assists in the development of the immune system. An adrenal gland is present above each kidney which secretes adrenaline hormone in the blood. Adrenaline reaches to the heart and various parts of the body through blood. Adrenaline increases the heart rate due to which there is more blood supply to the muscles of the body. Therefore, more oxygen reaches the muscles. In the presence of adrenaline, the muscles around the digestive system and the small arteries of the skin shrink. As a result, the supply of blood in the digestive system and skin decreases. This causes more blood to the skeletal muscles. Therefore, there is a contraction of diaphragm and the rib muscles and the breathing rate increases. Adrenaline also causes pupillary dilation, goosebumps and sweat secretion. All these responses together help the body to deal with an emergency. In an emergency, the secretion of adrenaline increases, so it is called the emergency hormone or the fight hormone. So, adrenaline is called fight, flight or fright hormone. Pancreas are present behind the stomach in our body. It secretes insulin hormone. Insulin helps in controlling the sugar level in the blood. If it is secreted in small amounts, the level of sugar in the blood rises. This causes a disease called diabetes. Diabetes patients take less sugar in their diet and are injected with insulin for treatment. In males, a pair of testers secretes testosterone hormone. Testosterone helps in production of sperm. It also stimulates muscle growth, low pitch voice, aggressiveness, growth of face and axillary hairs.
a pair of ovaries in the female secrete estrogen hormone estrogen assist in the growth of ovarian follicle and mammary glands it causes development of high pitch voice and secondary sexual characters in females all these changes occurs at the age of 10 to 12 years and are associated with puberty in this way various hormones control the growth metabolism and development of the body lack or excess of any hormone level in the body causes many diseases therefore it is necessary to have hormone secretion in a precise quantity in the body therefore the feedback mechanism controls the timing and the amount of hormone secretion in the feedback mechanism a substance present in the body regulates the secretion of the hormone due to which the hormone is secreted as per requirement in the body for example the cell of the pancreas detects the level of sugar in the blood when the level of sugar in the blood increases the secretion of insulin from the pancreas also increases and when the level of sugar in the blood decreases the secretion of insulin from the pancreas also decreases thus the level of sugar in the blood is controlled insulin helps in controlling sugar level in the blood now you must have understood that the endocrine system also assist in the control and coordination of the body therefore the nervous system and the endocrine system together perform the function of control and coordination in the body so today we have learned about endocrine control control